the Sydney Tar Ponds, one of the biggest toxic waste dumps in Canada. Seven hundred and fifty thousand tons of toxic soup, left behind from nearly a century of steel making, has been condemned for causing health problems. And not just in humans. They have deformities in their bones, and they're also they they are lopsided in terms of the way they develop. Finally, after decades of controversy and waiting, cleanup is about to begin. Today, it'll be one of the largest ones, if not the largest uh, stabilization project undergoing in the world. Don Chosky is a toxic cleanup specialist. He believes just a few ingredients can help transform this into this green oasis. It's kind of like baking a cake and coming up with the best uh, recipe at the end of the day. His goal is to turn this 32 hectare swamp into a cake that permanently encases the tar ponds toxins. We're uh, mixing the contaminated sediments with cement, fly ash, and uh, slag. The idea is to make the toxins prisoners of the soil, so as little water as possible passes through. And even if water does get through, the hazardous chemicals are locked in by the cement. In the particular cell he's working in now, we have uh, approximately 15 tons of cement. Uh, there's approximately 80 tons of uh, sediment to be stabilized and uh, approximately uh, 10 tons of slag. The challenge is getting that recipe right. Don't go so deep. Don't go so deep. They record every step as they experiment, so when they get it right, they know exactly how to do it again. Well, we know the volume of sediment in the cell and we want to add 10% slag to the cell as per the recipe. So we need to now calculate how many buckets 10% slag actually is. So we're adding four and three quarter buckets of slag to cell one. Once they've added a different combination of ingredients to each cell, they have to wait until it hardens. Success is evaluated by several simple parameters. One is a strength test, which means that it will uh, hold up under a certain amount of weight. That's one test. Another test is uh, a test for hydraulic conductivity, which means the material's inability to allow water to pass through it. In about a month, the mix in these cells will be hard, much like these samples already in the lab. And that's when the final testing can happen. So this is a cured sample. It's cured for about 40, 40 days or so. And you can tell by visually, it's very hard. It's got a nice, smooth feel to it. On the other side of that, this sample, which is cured for the same period of time, is actually kind of soft and hasn't reached its full strength yet. They test the permeability, how much water flows through it, here. The strength is tested with this. There it breaks. As you can see, it broke. And there's the constituents inside. We're looking at slag and some ash and tar. From an engineering standpoint, it's the best measurement. The final success of this cleanup may not be determined by engineers. Her tail is almost completely eroded. Maybe a tiny survivor beating all the odds by living in this toxic soup will hold the biggest clues. I think the surprising thing, though, is that there is life in the tar pond. So I was surprised to find mummy chogs here in the first place. Okay, so there's a green crab in this one. And in fact, you'll find crabs, shrimp, and catfish, too. But they're not unaffected. This is tar on her belly. Their health has paid a price. This is a really bad fin on a female mummy chog. So some of the bones are bent, some of the bones are missing, and a lot of the fin membrane is missing as well. What would that be caused by? Uh, it's caused by the pollution, the contaminants in the tar ponds. In her lab, it's easy to see how bad these deformities are. And this is a tail from a tar ponds fish. So you can see it's 
missing several bones. It's got a lot of broken bones in the tail and the membrane is not completely covering the tail. For Martha, it's a simple equation. If the deformities in these mummy chogs disappear over time, then the cleanup is working. My whole goal was to determine what, what the starting point is before the cleanup begins. So what condition are the tarpons in in terms of the biology? So once the cleanup happens, will the situation improve? Will a greater diversity of fish and other species be found in the tarpons? And will they also improve in their health? That question won't be answered, at least until the right recipe is figured out. Once the full-scale project begins, it will take five years to mix and harden this entire area. The life expectancy of this particular design and uh, uh, creation of this a solidified monolith will basically last for a thousand years. If all goes as planned, it will mean the elimination of one of the worst toxic waste sites in North America, and maybe a new lease on life for its residents.